you have your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter 8. We're going to begin reading at verse 14. You can stand for the reading of the word. If you'd like to, you don't have to. If you have it, say amen. amen. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Everybody say recipe. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money saying, Give me this power that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, Your money perished with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray if God, perhaps, the thought of your wickedness, thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned, if I say poisoned, by bitterness and bound by iniquity, then Simon answered and said, Pray to the Lord for me that none of these things which you have spoken may come upon me. Father, right now, I ask that you give illumination and impartation to your word today. That you help us, Lord. Help us stay in the Spirit. God, it's one thing to receive the Spirit. It's one thing to receive that blessing. It's one thing to be encouraged in the house of the Lord. It's another thing to live right after our feet hit the ground. So I'm asking God, you help us today to stay in the spiritual realms in all areas and arenas of our life, myself included. Help us, God. And we will receive your help and we'll give you praise and thanks for, it for all these things being done in the matchless mighty name of Jesus Christ. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Put your Bible in your lap just for a second. Praise Him one more time. Can we give God a hallelujah? <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. So before I read this story, this, this passage says that Simon himself also believed and he was baptized and he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles, signs, and wonders. There is a recipe for receiving the Spirit, for being filled with the Spirit, and the recipe is this, believe. I say believe. Be baptized. If you've never been baptized, it is a... It is a Public confession of your faith. Amen. Some of us may, I, I'm going to need to say this today, some of us may need to get baptized again. Because if we were baptized as a child and then we didn't know, or maybe we fall away from God and we need to renew our conscience once again. Whatever you need to do, we will do that for you. But that's a recipe. Everybody say it's a recipe. When you make a cake, you stick in some eggs, you put in some sugar. I don't make cakes. I don't know what all this is. I know you put a box of cake mix and you stick stuff in it. Right? Well, this is the recipe. And then it says they laid their hands on them. And when they laid their hands on them, they received the Holy Spirit. So that's a recipe. So they received. But there's a difference in receiving and staying in the Spirit. Whatever you get from God, you get it by faith. Everybody say it's by faith. Whatever you get by faith, you can lose through doubt. Whenever you get a blessing from God, you can rest assured that the devil, who is a repo man, is standing in line, ready to come collect your blessing. How many have decided long ago that you will not turn back and you're not going to let the enemy have what God has for you and steal it? The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and life more abundantly. Life from the Spirit. And so there is a there is a way that we can stay in the Spirit. And if we look at this picture of Simon the Sorcerer, he was someone who believed just like you and me. He was someone who saw the miracles just like you and me. He was someone who joined the church just like you and me. He was someone who maybe sang in the choir and played the tambourine just like you and me. But just because he got it didn't mean he kept it. Amen. And so number one, to stay in the Spirit, when he saw that the power was released through the laying on of hands, he remembered his old days of how he used to do tricks, parlor tricks and fool people and get money off of it. And he said, I want some of this. 
And he fell back into his old mindset, into his old life. He didn't stay in the Spirit. And so Simon Peter, of course, rebuked him. And he said, your heart is not right. Y'all see that here? I lost it, but I found it. Your money perished with you because you thought the gift of God could be purchased with money. This is the first way that you stay in the Spirit. Is you keep your thoughts right. Amen. Amen. You won't go wrong until you start thinking right. Amen. It starts in the space between. It starts as a thought. As long as it's a thought and it doesn't actualize into an act... It's just the thought. And the Bible says that we're to cast down every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We are capable of thinking up incredible evil. Now, none of y'all here, I know that y'all have pristine thoughts. You've never had a dirty <laughs> thought in your life. You've never looked at somebody and just thought, oh, they're just awful. I remember being a kid, and I didn't even know what the word meant, but it just seemed like it fit. And there was a lady walking across the street to go into the church, and she had the big beehive bun and she had the cat eye glasses. Do y'all remember that? Cat eye glasses? Yeah. And she was just walking across with the Bible and I was sitting in the front seat with my mom in the car and I just looked at her and I said, I despise her. <laughs> it just came out of my mouth. I was thinking, I don't even know what despise meant, but I think something with the cat eye glasses and the word despise, it just kind of went, I despise her. My mother said, you don't despise anybody. But it starts as a thought. It starts as a thought. You've got to keep your thinking right. When you realize that your thoughts are going down the wrong avenue, then you've got to turn around and go the, uh, go the other direction. Do you realize that you are the only one who has control over your thoughts? Amen. I think you better, y'all. Amen. See, I may not really have control over my feelings because my feelings... Or something that God gave me that are almost independent of my control. You can say something that, that makes me feel hurt or makes me feel glad. It's just uh, second nature. It's just uh, subconscious. On a subconscious level, your feelings are your feelings. How many of you have ever heard anyone say, you can't help how you feel? Amen. How many of you have ever said it yourself? How I many know it's kind of the truth? You can't help how you feel. Amen. But you can help how you think. That's right. And if you keep dwelling on thoughts that make you feel certain ways, then you're going to keep feeling certain ways. But you have control over your thoughts. So someone said something to you that gets you out of the spirit. And as long as you're thinking about how they said it, how they sit it and how they sit up there and they just act like this, somebody, and, and how you just can't wait to get your chance to tell them. As long as you're in that realm of thought, you're not going to be in the Spirit. You have stepped out of the Spirit. It starts with your thoughts. I know I say this on a regular basis here at the church because the truth is, is that God creates by what He says, but He thinks about it first. How many know anybody that says before they think? It's not God. Jesus Christ was the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And yet 2,000 years ago, God Himself stepped down in a flesh suit and became the Lamb slain for the sins of the world. But in the thoughts, in the mind of God, it was already done. When Jesus said, it is finished, God was just thinking, it was already finished. He was just speaking out what He already thought. Amen. Now here's the truth about us. is if we, can in, if we can harness the power of our thought, then we can begin to speak right things and think right things, then we'll stay in the Spirit of God that He has left with us, that He has put us in. That you're receiving here by being here and hearing the Word today. You can stay in it by keeping your thoughts. You have to be vigilant. You have to be sober. You have to be sober-minded. You have to be watchful because people will say things to make you think things. Amen. 
When, I, when I'm saying things right now, it's creating word pictures and thoughts in your head about, oh yeah, that happened to me this week. I was thinking about this and I got upset because I kept thinking about it. You got anybody in the room that's with me? Amen. But you have control over your thoughts. You can, say, you can say, I'm going to stop thinking about that. If you've got to rent a funny movie to get out of a depression, do it. If you've got to get your thoughts going on, whatever you've got to do, do it. Keep your thoughts going in the right direction. Number two, the second way that you say, stay in the Spirit is you make corrections when you need to. Now, we are living in a church society. I'm not even talking about the world. I'm going to just talk about the church for a minute. Is this all right? The truth is, is our church would have more people in it right now if people could take correction. Because we don't like to be corrected. It's quiet in this Methodist Episcopalian church today. We don't want to be corrected. We want to be correct. We want to be correct even if we're not. And we want people to think we're correct if we're not. I'll take a good amen. amen. So when Peter said to Simon, your money perished with you because you thought to give to God to be purchased with money. You don't have a part or a portion of the matter for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness. That word repent doesn't just mean to say you're sorry. And I believe in doing it. You all understand that? I think it's highly right to tell God you're sorry when you sin and you mess up. The truth is, He already forgives you. He's already forgiven you. It's already done. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't say you're sorry. Amen. How many have ever hurt someone's feelings? Isn't it right to tell them you're sorry? Yeah. How many know that you've went against what God wants you to do? Don't you think it's right to tell God, your best friend, that you're sorry for messing up? Amen. But here's what we do is we stop with I'm sorry. This is my, y'all are not shouting on me today, but it's okay. I know because I'm talking about staying in the spirit. We don't. We stop with I'm sorry, but we don't make the correction that we need to, to uh, make. And the word repent has the idea of I'm going to correct this. I'm not going to do this anymore. I love everybody, and God loves everybody. You believe that? Amen. And how many of you all have children? Amen. And you love your children. You yes. love them. You're, you're not there yet, Tammy. You can't do this yet. But if your kid acts up because you love them, you will correct them. Amen. And God loves us and He will correct us. And even the discipline in the house of God, you think, wow, God is a God of grace. We sing it. Your grace is enough. We believe you come in this church and you come be here just as you are. I don't care what kind of junk you're dragging behind you. Bring your junk to church. Amen. 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 But don't bring it to church and get offended when the pastor or someone says something that lets you know, I've got to correct this. I've got to fix this. The truth is, is I can't fix you, but you can fix you. I can't make the course corrections in your life for you. Repentance is a one-on-one -on -one thing. Make corrections. You know, we correct our children, and they, they touch the socket when they're real little. We smack their fingers. They come do it again, we smack their fingers. Hopefully they'll get it at some point. But they still have to make the decision. I'm not going to touch that socket anymore. Because every time I touch that socket, I get my fingers smacked. Amen. Do you see the purpose of loving people and, and God loving you enough to tell you the truth? To get you out of this wickedness and out of this bad place and get you into the spiritual realms where all of His blessings are. Let God make corrections. Make the corrections that God gives you to make. Actually, it's more like this. How many have ever taken a test in school and you get back the math paper and it's got a bunch of red X's on it? And the teacher says, make the corrections and then turn it back in. How many have ever had the opportunity to do that? That's what God does for us. He's not beating you up because you messed up. He just hands you back the test paper. It says, make these corrections. Make these corrections. 
If it's all right today, put a hand up and say yes. yes. Say oh yes. Oh, yes. Say oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> that went go up. Number three, y'all. Only got four today. If it's all right, say yes. yes. Amen. Number three, if you're going to stay in the spirit, you have got to get rid of the poison. You got to get rid of poison. Tell somebody, say, you got to get rid of poison. Says I see that you are poisoned by bitterness. This is what he told Simon. You are in the spirit, but you've got a poison. You've got the hold of a poison. Something that's underneath your cabinet. That's got the Mr. Yuck symbol on it. Y'all remember that? Mr. Yuck is me. Mr. Yuck is green. Oh. It was to tell kids not to drink the poison. We are God's kids today. And God is telling you, don't take the poison. Don't take the bait. You've got to get rid of the poison. What am I saying today? There are some people in our life that are toxic to us. Amen. Get rid of the poison. It doesn't mean you tell them if you're a blue faced baboon and I don't like you anymore. You go jump in a lake. Don't get me. Just don't take the call. Let it go to voicemail. My God, that's why we have voicemail. <laughs> so don't text saying I'm too busy. <laughs> You're too busy staying in the spirit to get poisoned by toxins that people carry with them. People will say things to you. They'll say things to you to get you out of the spirit, out of the sword, out of your blessing. You're in a marriage. You've got a best girlfriend. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk to the women for a second because I think women do this more men. I think. I might be wrong. But you have a best girlfriend, and your girlfriend starts telling you, you know, your husband ain't no good. You need to go home and take a frying pan to his head. She is not helping you out. She's giving you some poison. And she will get you out of the spirit. And she'll probably get you into divorce court if you listen to the poison. Do y'all hear me today? There are even churches and spiritual places that are poisonous. I'm going to tell you, a spiritual place, a religion that tells people, if they don't believe like you, you kill them. That's poison. And it's happening all over the world. Amen. We may not kill people physically, but in the church, Christian church, we'll tell people, we'll say, if they don't believe like us, we'll shun them. We won't have it. We'll just uh, stick our nose up at It's poison. Poisoning us. But if we want to stay in the spirit, we've got to let all, all poison, all bitterness, anything that's not like God go from us. And be, be willing to go through our cabinets and get the things out in the spiritual realm. I'm talking to God here, I'm talking Amen. to the spirit. Go through your own cabinets, the cabinets of your of your mind, the cabinets of your past, the cabinets of the hurts and the failures and all the things that have, have been a poison to you, and the, the cabinets of relationships that don't add to you but take away and be willing to say, I'm getting rid of this poison. I'm getting rid of it. I'm going to pour it down the drain. It's not going to affect me anymore. Amen. Look at somebody say, I'm getting rid of the poison. I've only got one more if it's all right, say amen. amen. Can I just say one, one way that we get, before I move on, one way that we get rid of poison is we forgive. And I, I feel compelled to say this. There are some of us who have been through relationship issues that the person that we have poison with or poisoned by, have bitterness with, does not deserve your forgiveness. They don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. What they did or said was too awful. But the poison of the bitterness is not hurting them. It's hurting you. So whether they deserve to be forgiven, have ever asked to be forgiven, we forgive anyway because it's pouring the poison down the sea. 
It's releasing all liability, all indebtedness. Someone did you wrong. Someone took money from you. Someone took advantage of you. Yes, it happened. No, it won't happen again. But I'm not going to sit around wallowing in it, staying mad about it, talking about it every time I have a chance. The truth is, is I still got the poison if I'm doing it. This, this is good. Some good stuff today. Amen. 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 So, so I'm talking about staying in the spirit, staying alive, walking down the street with a smile on your face, spring in your step, joy in your soul, and peace ruling in your heart and mind. That's what, that's what staying in the spirit is about. It's not staying in some kind of altered state where you know you can't speak in English and uh, you, you can't open your eyes and you got to feel your... That's not being in the Spirit. Being in the Spirit is being happy. Being in the Spirit is being joy-filled. Being in the Spirit is having peace in the midst of the storm. I can't you know, amen in here. Being in the Spirit is having faith when no one else does. Being in the Spirit is being encouraged and courageous when everyone else around you is fearful. Amen. Being in the Spirit is having a feeling and a faith and a belief and a knowledge that everything is going to be all right. Because it already is all right. How many want to be in the Spirit today? Look at your neighbor and say, you need to be in the Spirit. In the Spirit. Let's get in the Spirit. And let's stay in the Spirit. Number four. The fourth way that you stay in the Spirit is you ask for freedom. Ask for freedom. Ask. You have not because you don't ask for it. You live beneath your privilege because you never ask God to do something for you. You never think about asking the one who holds the world in his hands about doing something for you. Instead, we'll talk to anybody else who'll listen. And freedom is the best thing that you can have. And we like to say in our nation, we are free people. There are a lot of things in our nation we're not free from. Amen. We're not free from criticism. We're not free from paying taxes. <laughs> we're not free from having to work to, to make a living. I mean, you think free, oh, I can just lay on the boat all day. That's not what freedom is. Freedom is what we talk about in the song. I won't forget. How can I forget what you've done for me? I won't forget you hung on the cross and died for my freedom. Amen. Jesus Christ himself. Provides freedom through his truth. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Amen. And so Simon the sorcerer gets a little slice of truth from Peter when he asked to do something. And it was almost a little harsh. When you think about, well, Simon the sorcerer, that's what he did. He didn't know any better. He's just asking them, if I give you money, can you give me the power to do it? And I'll do it with you. And he didn't, it seemed like almost the punishment didn't fit the crime. But Peter looked past the outside and he saw that he was poisoned by bitterness. Poisoned by bitterness. And this, this is what it says. I see that you're poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. You're not free. You're not free. And we don't know the rest of the story, but it says that Simon Peter said, pray to the Lord and ask and ask that all of these things could be forgiven. I want to get right. I want to be right. There is a simple thing of when you step out of line, all you have to do is ask God. Get me back. His mercies are new every morning. And we are outside of relationship of peace or joy because we never say the words to God. Lord, bring me back in. He is as real and He is as uh, there as the shirt on your back. That's how real God is. And sometimes He is the silent, silent uh, occupant of your vehicle. The silent bed partner. He's the silent co-worker. He's not there he, I mean, he's there, but you don't realize he's there until you begin to speak to him. He begins to speak to you. When you ask, it shall be given. You can't ask God to forgive you for a sin, forgive you for a misdeed, and him not do it. 
And if you feel like you're not forgiven, that is a deception from the enemy of your soul. Because you were forgiven before you ever asked. But you still should ask. Ask that your joy may be full. Ask God. Ask God. Ask Him for what you need. Think about this today as we're, as we're just... As we're... <laughs> As we're uh, as we're settling this down today, as we're as we're getting into a, a place of meditation about what God is saying to me, or what God is saying to you, I want you to think about what you need God to do. Maybe it's not even for you. I know there's a need here today that we're going to pray for specifically. Someone that you know, but there's no nothing too small. Maybe there's something in you that you know is just not right. How many? would be honest to say that there have been times in your life that you've just said, Lord, I don't like me. I don't like what I do. I don't like how I am. I don't I don't like how I act sometimes. I don't like that I lose my temper or I lose my cool. I don't I don't like screaming and hollering and fussing and fighting. I don't I don't like being depressed. I don't like being down. I don't need a change. And the God that you ask for the change is the God that's here today that will give you the change. There's power in the name of Jesus. We ask for it in His name. He said He would do it. I want to encourage you to believe this today. What you ask for in His name, what faith believe, He said you'll get it. You'll have it. No qualifications. No, no, no. If this or if that. If you ask for it in His name and you believe it, you'll get it. How many? Can, you can't be a God like that. Amen. Amen. So how many just want to be right in your soul today? Will you bow your heads and your hearts and take this opportunity to check yourself and to see, Lord, am I in the Spirit? Am I in the Spirit? Have I stayed in the Spirit this week? Have there been things, Lord, that have got me off my thoughts? Are there some corrections, God, that I need to make that no one can make for me? Is there some poison, God, that I need to pour down the sink once and for all? God, I'm asking that you make us with your truth. Make us free. Make us free. Deliver us, Lord. This is Deliverance Sunday. You are doing a deliverance on your people today. Delivering them, Lord, from thoughts that they've had maybe all their life that they're not good enough. Delivering them, Lord, from the hurts and the failures in the, in the past.